so thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction uh, so what i'm going to do i will uh, provide a very selective review of some of the flavor physics uh, result in the recent past which is interesting to many of us uh, in the context of new physics search and particularly for supersymmetry and for the interpretation part i will leave it to dipti moy to cover that's not my cup of tea and uh, so therefore dipti moy i'm sure he will cover otherwise we will we'll come back to that okay so why do we worry about flavor physics so this is a kind of four uh, sort of uh, um, you know clouds you can see uh, that flavor physics is indeed an excellent probe for various new physics scenario in an indirect way, of course. It's, um, so the first thing is we can uh, perform the null test of the standard model. Uh, like there are several standard model candle and that we need to very precisely measure and then test if there is any deviation. Uh, we, we can study the various suppressed and forbidden decay. Uh, those are not allowed in the standard model. And uh, the talk of the town has been the test of left on flavor universality. Um, so that is, I will be talking quite a bit on that. The part I will not be talking about uh, is so-called the hidden and dark sector search, mostly in the uh, mass scale of GV. So who are the key players? Um, uh, obviously we had the first uh, generation of flavor E plus E minus flavor uh, experiment, namely Babur. Uh, and uh, Bell that you see in the uh, in the in the top two uh, plots, and uh, the real uh, you know sort of the lions of the flavor factory right now is LSCB experiment at LSC right now here is a forward arm spectrometer. Um, that's because you know you have the most of the uh, the B major and the flavor uh, particles that are produced. Uh, uh, largely along the forward and the backward direction. So this is a forward spectrometer. And then the uh, sort of the new kid in the town is the Bell 2 uh, is uh, harping on the success of the previous generation uh, experiment, namely Babur and Bell. But uh, where one is talking of uh, uh, sort of two order of magnitude the luminosity, we haven't yet got in there. Hopefully we will get. Uh, Atlas and CMS, uh, they are not the real flare here, but obviously uh, if you have uh, muon in the final state, <clears throat> uh, particularly CMS can be very, very competitive. The part they miss uh, is uh, one of the key, key part for flavor uh, physics is basically the charge hadron identification. So none of these two experiments have that, but they compensate with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, the trigger, with, with the, the dimion trigger. Okay, so uh, what about the data? So there's incredible amount of data between Babur and Bell. Uh, so Bell alone uh, collected uh, about one actual one inverse of data and Babur something like half of that, uh, 550 uh, femto one inverse of data. Uh, as far as the physics analysis for uh, Babur is concerned, is pretty much uh, at the tail. Bell still produced at a, a good rate of, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, continues to produce the physics paper. Bell too has uh, started uh, the, the, the data taking since 2019, and uh, so far collected close to uh, 190 inverse frame to one of data. Uh, one interesting part is uh, like we continue to take the data despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, on the other hand, you have LSCB. Uh, here you see this uh, the kind of the data they have. Um, so just to give a scale, uh, one femto one inverse of data for LSCB, they're roughly equivalent to uh, one at one inverse of data from the flavor factory. So this really incredible amount of the data from LSCB. So what are the pros and the cons of the, uh, you know, sort of the hydrogen collider experiment versus the lepton collider? Uh, e plus e, e minus flavor factory, they profit from the clean environment, well-defined kinematics, um, no pile up pretty much, uh, though they suffer from a low production cross section for the heavy flavor hydrogen. Uh, particularly, we take the data at the Upsilon forest uh, regionance. On the other hand, LSC is a broadband machine. I mean, giving access to all kinds of heavy flavor hydrogen. Uh, 
clearly suffers from messy hadronic environment. If you have final state where there's a neutrino or uh, uh, neutral particles such as photon pi zero, uh, it's always a challenge to trigger on. Okay, so uh, there are some other key differences. Uh, I, I would like to show this thing and this will have some uh, linkage to what I will discuss next. Um, in the top left plot, you see that how a muon and an electron will give signal in this forward arm spectrometer of LSCB. Uh, clearly, electron radiates a lot, um, not so much by muon. Um, and, and obviously, that it will also radiate in, in case of uh, Bell 2, which is on the uh, top right side. But because of the E plus E minus environment, uh, you don't have such a issue of uh, pile up and, and many other issues that you see for the hydrogen from a scene. Uh, so the electron deconstruction is not as efficient in LSCB as well too. That is one key difference. The other difference, well, is actually for both the experiment, identification of the tau lepton is challenge. It's always a challenge. I said in the previous slide that, uh, you know, sort of finding out final state, the decay final state where you have neutrino, I say challenge for LSCB. And in fact, uh, when LSCB started data taking before that, I was one of the few who was skeptical that can they do anything to do with the final state with the neutrino? And they have proved me wrong, thanks to the, the fact you have the beam agents are highly boosted in the forward direction, and they have a very beautiful uh, silicon, you know, something I, I love. Uh, so silicon vortex detector, so-called vortex locator. So they can really pinpoint the decay vortex position of the secondary and the tertiary vortex to, to the level of even finding the tau lepton vortex. If you have tau going to the multiple charge rack, such as here, you see tau going to three pi. On the other hand, uh, in case of Bell 2, because you have clean E plus E minus kinematics to start with, you know what is the initial energy and the momentum. Uh, you have two B major and nothing else. Epsilon 4 is going to be B bar. You look at the recalling B major and either fully reconstruct it, what we call hadronic tagging, or you can do something called semi-leptonic tagging, just the charge of the lepton will tell you whether it's a B0 or a B0 bar. Uh, and then you look at the, the recoil side, particularly in this particular case, when you are talking of multiple neutrino final state, we largely look at the hadronic tagging, the cleaner channel. So you fully reconstruct the tag, we may John, and you know the initial energy momentum conservation, I mean, initial energy momentum and the final state very well. So you can predict what is the energy momentum of the signal side beam engine. Out of that, you find out whatever the visible decay product, you really don't have to care about whether you have one or multiple neutrino. So that's because of the uh, kinematics. Uh, but still it is a challenge. Uh, it is not as good as like when you have fully reconstructable, reconstructable final state. Now let me move on to the result. The first one I take up in the first category, this is like a standard model candle, so-called, uh, you know, the, uh, the triangle of this unitary triangle, uh, uh, so-called CKM uh, triangle, uh, gamma, this is uh, out of the triangle, this is really theoretically clean. Uh, my colleague tells me the theory uncertainty is really to something like 10 to the minus six or seven, something like that. Here, LSCB is the real player. Uh, and in this top left, you see the compilation of the, all the LSCB uh, result uh, related to phi three or gamma. And they have got the single most precise value of 65 with a plus minus four degree uncertainty. That's really impressive result. Very recently, uh, there has been a the very fast Bell plus Bell to combine analysis. I said Bell already have something like 700 to 800 inverse frame to one data. 
at Upsilon Forest. Bell 2 has close to 119 uh, inverse frame to one of data. If you combine them, this is actually done by one of our Indian colleagues, Indian groups. Uh, and we are not yet competitive like LSCB, but you know, to getting an uncertainty of 11 degrees is really a remarkable thing. Um, so now let me move on uh, to the decay. Those are sensitive to new physics. The first class of decay we have is the B2 three-level decay, where you have B to C transition with an emission of a virtual W boson that either go to a tau nu tau or mu uh, nu mu. That is the left side plot coming from the standard model. So if you compare the Feynman diagram, uh, you see the only difference whether you have a tau or nu tau is the mass of that left turn, of course. So the other thing, the form factor, they mostly cancel. I mean, they're really crazy, but if you are taking the ratio of the branching fractions, this form factor, they mostly cancel out. Now, uh, so, so you have, that is the standard model contribution, but you can have potential beyond standard model contribution. Like you can replace the W boson with a charged Higgs boson and you can have the decay diagram that's shown in the middle, or you can have a very clumsy uh, looking uh, Feynman diagram, which, which essentially uh, correlate the quark lepton vortex with another quark lepton vortex mediated by the left hook work. So you have contribution of that. So this ratio of RD star is really RD and RD star. They're really sensitive to new physics. Um, so here is uh, the compilation of the result. Uh, Babur, Bell, uh, LSCB, we, Bell 2 has not yet joined the game here. Uh, and either, I mean, these are the, uh, Decay, uh, which will be challenging for CMS and Atlas. I know there is some work is going on, but obviously it is not going to be so easy for CMS. Uh, so you see uh, this uh, uh, combination, uh, the, com uh, the red uh, ellipse is the, the average uh, and uh, the blue, uh, the points with error bar, black and blue points with error bar, uh, those are the standard model prediction. Uh, so the black one uh, coming from this Biggie Gambino, and then, you know, sort of this is from Bordon. Um, so you see about 3.4 sigma discrepancy with respect to standard model prediction. Personally, you asked me, I'm not too excited about it because if you remove the Babar result from this thing, take out the gray uh, ellipse, uh, you could see there will be a uh, significant, uh, you know, the, the the difference between the standard model and the experimental difference will, will there will be still some tension, but um, not something uh, uh, we'll be too excited about. Never mind. This is the state we right now are in, and it will be interesting to have uh, more result from LSCB especially on the so-called RD, which is challenging for LSCB, but still they're working on it, and also result from Bell 2. Now I move on to the real poster child of new physics search in uh, the flavor sector. This is a uh, FCNC decay, highly suppressed in the standard model. As you can see, multiple, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, multiple vortex, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the quantum loop. And it has been really used as a new physics probe for a while. If you're talking of a B major going to a K star in the, uh, in the right-hand side, uh, you'll have a plethora of observable to deal with. You'll have branching fraction and uh, you, you have this, the fact K star is a, is a vector meson. Uh, you can do the angular analysis. So there are lots of angular observable. So, and in addition, what you have really the theoretically clean lepton universality ratio. First, we look at the branching fraction. Um, so on the top left side, uh, result from LSCB, uh, where uh, they look at the B sub S to 5 mu mu. Uh, 
uh, is equivalent of B going to Jeff's, uh, B going to Kesh star mu mu. Uh, so what you see, the experimental data given by the black points with the error bar, uh, they have result at three femtoban inverse as well as nine inverse femtoban and various uh, theory uncertainty given in this, uh, uh, um, you know, in these different field um, rectangles. So you see that uh, almost all Q square win. So Q square is the dilepton invariant mass square. Uh, you see that the experimental data uh, systematically below the theory uh, prediction. Uh, you have the same story go to the top right. Uh, that is uh, for um, B to K mu mu. You see the same trend. Uh, and then at the uh, bottom left, you have B to K star mu mu, similar trend consistently lower experimental value compared to the theory prediction. Uh, the problem is, uh, as you could imagine from the theory uncertainty, uh, they are the real killer here. We can't be too precise that uh, whether we have to really jump the gun here because of the virtual charm loop contribution. So we need to go for the observable, which are theoretically cleaner, definitely not the branching fraction, okay? So the next one we have in the uh, line uh, is uh, so-called the angular observable, optimized angular observable. It's given by uh, this colleague. Oh, by the way, so this, uh, uh, the part, um, uh, I didn't say uh, this, these two empty um, vertical band you see, and those are the uh, charmonium resonance region, Jepsi and Psi prime. And those for obvious reason we um, veto them up. So um, on the this top left, you see this uh, optimized angular observable P five prime. The way this uh, angular observable is designed uh, is supposed to minimize the theory uncertainty. Although some of uh, our theory colleagues they <laughs> do not agree to that, or rather they. Still, I mean, definitely they agree this is better than the branching fraction, but not something they will say is as good as like the lepton um, flavor universality ratio. So in this P5 prime, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, manage to get the CMS result. I will put it in and update the slide. Um, CMS and Atlas result in this. But what you see um, from LSCB that in two of the bin, particularly this uh, been around five and, and the uh, sort of seven GV square, you see the experimental data is on the higher side compared to the theory um, prediction. Uh, Bell has done this measurement. Of course, we don't have that kind of incredible amount of data uh, power, uh, but what you see in this uh, top uh, right plot, um, by the way, on the left-hand side, it is for the muon and the electron, uh, sorry, muon case. Uh, and what you see in Bell, we have uh, divided the data in terms of Bell, uh, sorry, electron and the muon. So what do you see? We see similar chain in that bin of five GeV. What we see that the electron uh, more, result is more close to the standard model compared to the muon mode. So the discrepancy is more in the muon channel compared to the electron channel. There is uh, another observable uh, predicted by, uh, suggested by the sort of uh, collaborator of the same group that predicted P5 prime called Q5. It is just the uh, difference of the P5 for the muon to the electron. And the claim is that in the standard model, it should be all zero. Uh, anything you see deviation from zero is signature of new physics. At the current level of statistics, you'll see around that five GB, there is a little bit of uh, excess, but not something uh, I will jump over the four. Okay, now we go to this, 
the most famous uh, Lipton flavor universality ratio. For the students in the audience, it's very simple. It is the ratio of two branching fraction um, for B major one going to X mu mu uh, versus B major one going to X e e. So almost all the theory uncertainty that one can think of and some of the experimental uncertainty also, some of the experimental uncertainty also will cancel. Uh, this is really theoretically pristine. One is able to control QCD effect down to 10 to the minus four. And what you see in this top left, this is a compilation of results from LSCB, uh, Babur and Well. This was the previous Bell result, but uh, so I, I'll come to uh, the Bell result also. But what you see LSCB, which has the uh, the most precise measurement uh, in the uh, in the beam uh, in this low beam, low T square beam, they are significantly away. Standard model prediction is one; they are significantly below one. In the case of Bell. Uh, so this, uh, what you see on the top left plot, it was the previous Bell result. In the top right, this is the very recent Bell result done by uh, a German colleague, uh, one of my close collaborator. So what you see here uh, in the paper published in PRL, that we have similar trend. Um, we are consistent with standard model. I'm not claiming more than that, but there is a trend. Let's, let's say that, um, but obviously our uncertainty band is, is pretty big. Uh, LSCP, uh, because as I said, they have access to all kinds of B hadrons. So they have also looked at the B variant, lambda B going to PKLL. Uh, so this is uh, RPK, uh, and they, you see a similar trend that branching fraction is below the standard model prediction not uh, too precise set. And now we go on something before I go to uh, you know more generic thing, I, I just want to uh, make a pause and, and just remind you something that in the top two plot, you see what in uh, Bell and Babur or Bell 2 we call beam energy constraint mass. Uh, it should peak around nominal beam edge on mass for signal and the background are combinatorial largely. So you see that's comparison between the electron and the muon mode. So I said in the beginning, and you, are, you should convince yourself indeed that for E plus E minus flavor factory, both electron and muon have similar performance. Now you compare with our friend from Hadron machine from LSCB, the equivalent flare presented in the bottom two plot. Muons are all good on the right-hand side, but you see the issue on the electron channel. They have done a really remarkable job to control the systematics and have shown, you know, the, in the JPSI mode, which is a control sample, uh, there's a well under control, but it is not clean. That is what the message I want to give you. So you are prone to the picking background, the sort of the, uh, the, the most problematic one, this X, the E, the background. How about RK? So here uh, we have a women's here LSCV. Bell result is consistent with standard model. Yeah, so th this is the result I was saying uh, done by one student from IIT Hyderabad, uh, published to JF. We don't have that those many candidate events, unlike LSCV, that you can sort of count that how many signal we have got something like 150 or so for each of the channel in electron muon per, per, per bell. But then you, you see the situation in bell two. So they have the most precise measurement uh, and the result is 3.1 sigma away lower than the standard model prediction as shown in this top uh, left plot. Okay, so uh, both in RK star and RK, uh, you have little about three sigma uh, discrepancy. Uh, I didn't talk up, uh, there's some theory colleague, maybe Dipti, Dipti Moy will do that. So that they have tried to put all the B to S uh, transition result and they even claim 
something like close to four sigma deviation between the standard model and the experimental, uh, you know, the, the combined uh, result. Never mind. What does future hold for this lepton flavor universality test? So this is one of the key thing for Bell two to perform. And uh, for the reason I mentioned, Bell two offers a complementary setup with respect to LSCB. Uh, I hope I have convinced to you the performance of the electron channel with respect to the muon. And something that LSCB definitely cannot do, we can look at R X of S, which is an inclusive, uh, that is even better theoretically as I don't uh, understand. So here in this table, you see the prediction of the uncertainty on different LFU ratio, RK to RX of S, uh, with a different uh, luminosity scenario. The first one, this is the prediction, well, this is the major result we have already from Bell uh, with 710 femtoban inverse or 0.7 atoban inverse data. Uh, this is the measurement uh, prediction, well, the prediction for uh, Bell to five atoban, and we're supposed to collect 50 atoban inverse of data. And one of my students is working on this analysis. So I just thought of showing this. This is the measurement with just the beginning using a, something like uh, 60 inverse frame to one of data. We have seen this uh, decay for the first time in Belto, but we have to have more data, at least comparable data uh, like Bell we're expecting by the middle of next year. And uh, so there is a plan of combined Bell and Bell to analysis. So I would like you to be a little bit patient uh, because this uh, idea of a nano beam scheme is a new technology altogether uh, being used at support KXP. And there are certain teething issues, challenges uh, our experimental accelerator colleague are working on. But here is this uh, kind of uh, prediction coming from this uh, uh, review article that where we will uh, stand in different uh, um, LFU ratios uh, between Bell, uh, Bell 2 and LSCB. Clearly for some of the uh, LSCB will have a much larger uh, lifespan. Uh, Bell 2 will go something like uh, 2030, uh, 132, uh, but as far as this RK, RK star anomaly is concerned, we really have to have the result from Bell 2, I would say, especially for this electron channel part. Okay, uh, there are two or three slides more I have. This is a rare decay and I know all of my Suzy enthusiast colleague, they really love for this channel. And uh, particularly, it's supposed to be this uh, tangent beta, for high tangent beta, it is supposed to be very, very sensitive. Uh, you just have multiple loop and you, you replace Suzy particle, any other thing that you think is allowed in your model. So this is uh, even more suppressed, the bunch of uh, decay I, I showed earlier, where one is talking of 10 to the power minus seven. Here one is talking of 10 to the power minus nine. Um, so we need, a real huge separation of combinatorial and misidentified background where you have a hadron misidentified muon. So here I would like to compare you, I'd like you to compare the top plot for CMS, the bottom plot for LSCB, see the power of muon identification in one hand, even if we don't have uh, charged hadron identification, we are able to do this measurement. But on the other hand, you have to give the credit to LSCB thanks to their charge hadron identification capability, they're able to control the picking background. So making more precise measurement than CMS. And uh, so here we have sort of inconsistent with standard model, although there is a little bit of uh, deviation in the B, D decay and some people are excited about it and writing paper, I am not so much, but uh, here I would say we are quite consistent with the standard model prediction. Very recent result from Bell 2. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, uh, theoretically clean decay mode. You don't have um, the gamma star contribution. So uh, this is uh, only the Z penguin uh, or the W box. 
So this decay is suppressed and is complementary to the KLL, uh, you know, for many of the new, new physics scenario, particularly leptoquire axion and dark matter particle. So experimentally very challenging because you have two escaping neutrino. So Bell 2 has deployed a novel inclusive tagging method to substantially enhance the signal efficiency, 4%. Uh, okay, you shouldn't worry too much, oh, the by efficiency should be close to 100%, but yes, 4% is the real state of that here, compared to much less than 1%, which was there earlier by Barber and Bell. We used two, uh, this so-called machine learning classifier booster decision tree, of which the second one is nested with respect to the first one to fight uh, the background. And you can see that with a tiny set of data, about uh, something like uh, 17 inverse frame to one, uh, we are competitive with the earlier result available uh, from Bell and Babur. So um, still, uh, we haven't made observation of this decay. Uh, the expected branching fraction is 2 point, uh, the upper limit, uh, branching fraction upper limit, 2.3, 10 to the minus four. There is slight excess. So therefore the observed uh, upper limit is higher than the expected upper limit at four into 10 to the power minus five. Uh, with uh, the full data uh, we expect, well, Bell equivalent data we expect by next year. My prediction is we'll have the past observation. Okay, so that brings me to my summary slide. I hope I haven't stopped, I uh, mean, gone too high into my time. So I gave you a sort of sample of result of the decay sensitive to new physics, including supersymmetry. Two sets of anomaly, uh, the steel level anomaly coming in the B to D star town new, the way you have about 3.4 sigma and similar level of tension with this B to SLL, uh, mostly uh, dominated by the K star LL and KLL. In either case, lepton seems to be non-universal and my theory friend, they will have more to say on that. Now, I'm an experimentalist, so I, 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 I would like to look at the data and to see that whether it is a genuine signal for new physics or prior statistics only time and more refined analysis will tell us. Uh, I understand CMS and Atlas, uh, they are really working hard on this. It is not a, something I said very challenging for CMS, particularly for the electron, both for CMS and Atlas, and they're doing, they're working hard on that. Um, and uh, the expectation is in maybe Sanjay will correct me in a couple of years, we'll have some result, maybe one or two years, maybe. Uh, so, so please stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you, Gogan, for, for a very uh, clear and informative talk. And uh, we are a little bit into the question answer time. So uh, I will, uh, if there is a quick question, does anyone want to ask a question? I don't see any raised hand or I don't see any chat, any in the chat box. So, uh, yeah, so maybe after the few hours talk, we can come together if ah, there's some question yes, like yes. any experimental yeah, thing, yeah. we can see. That, thank you. That's what I'm sorry, I'm a little I was over the time. Say, uh, if there is uh, any of you think of any other question, please type in the chat box. And now let's.